Oh boy. We have a bit of a problem. Excuse me, not all of you. We have made up, haven't we? The worst of Monday and the worst of Tuesday all wrapped into one. Why didn't Dad get a dog with more hair? Oh, Lucy, you're getting awful thick. Come on, you. Oh, yuck. So this escalated quickly. Oh. Good morning, you guys. We have had our first real blizzard in 2021. I like to call today Moose Day because yesterday was a holiday Monday here and maybe just in Ontario called Family Day. Just an excuse to have a stat holiday, I guess, in the middle of the winter. After a long weekend, the first Tuesday back, we just nickname it Moose Day because it's usually like the worst of Monday and the worst of Tuesday all wrapped into one. We got a lot of snow and a lot of wind, so Mark's been digging for the last hour and a half or so. I wanted to come in here first thing this morning because yesterday afternoon I actually came and turned on my ventilation again because I had it off because it was so cold and I was afraid of water freezing. So I was thinking I was going to be expecting the worst this morning, but it stayed warm enough in here, believe it or not. So we have water. And that's all I really came over here to do right now. I have to go over and get chores figured out, make sure everything starts, because last week I had a heck of a time getting all these vehicles started. So, all right, onward to the next, hopefully not dramatic event. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. You're lighter than me, that's not fair. I'll show off. I'm gonna do this on my knees. Oh. That's exciting. Oh. Come on, door. We have a bit of a problem. I noticed yesterday I did a, a walkthrough on these U's that are due here in, um, it's under a month now that they're due, but I've noticed a few bags starting to fill up, a few udders starting to fill up, which means we did have an escape, as the, the rams escaped a couple weeks early on this group. And I noticed yesterday there was blood on one of the U's tails. And that's never a good sign. That means she is probably in process of miscarrying a fetus. And indeed, this morning I came in and there's two here. And one, she's with the other one. So she had triplets, which sucks. And they're a really nice size. So not sure what's going on. Uh, she looks like she's almost full term. So she's probably one of the ones that got the escape artists on her. I would have said if she was on course to lamb on March break, which is when this group is supposed to be due, that would be there basically a month premature. And a month premature in my barn always means, like 99% of the time, always means chlamydia. They've got a little outbreak of chlamydia. Uh, but in this case, I would say she's only two weeks early. 
and her group has been vaccinated. She's a pink tag, which means she was born in 2016, which was my original ones. The very first group that I started to uh, keep some back and I started the chlamydia vaccine program then. Could have very well been something else. That's a problem with a miscarry or a, uh, an abortion. Unless I get it tested, which I don't usually take my fetuses to the lab unless it hits 5% of the entire group. So if I have enough that would equal 5% of the group, that means I have a legit problem because some sheep just don't make it full term for whatever reason. So the, the program I have with my vet is the 5% rule. If they hit 5%, then I go to the I go to the lab with the fetuses and some placenta if there is any and get a good, uh, get a good test on it. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, there's no more of this. Not a great way to start a week. This group looks really good, so I'm just a bit disappointed. And I haven't even begun to dig myself out of this barn yet. <laughs> so here's the mom. As you can see she's got some blood on her nose because she's been licking them off. She's still got a little afterbirth hanging out. So there's the one. I love you too. Well, I'm still smiling guys because I forgot to tell you today is our first day in Ontario that lockdown is lifted. Uh, Murphy's Law, we can't actually go anywhere. The roads are a mess. However, I don't know how we did it, but Monty went and got us coffee from McDonald's. So yes, it's 11 a.m. and I just finished chores and we just finished digging ourselves out of all this snow and uh, I'm gonna go have a little warm up with Mark and Monty in the office. It took six hours, but Mark finally has us all dug out, kind of. This is gonna be another day's job before, uh, before our first spring thaw for sure, or all that snow is gonna be inside my barn in the form of a river, as you guys are well aware. Uh, I'm going to spend the next hour or so weighing some market lambs because we are into the weekly weighings right now. As I clean out this barn, I wanna get enough lambs out of the barn to be able to wean on Thursday, which is in two days already. So I'm gonna wean the oldest lambs there at least eight weeks. They need to get out of here and I need to get a pen cleaned out because I have a funny feeling we're gonna have early lambs and that could happen next week. So I have to have a clean spot for them. So uh, it was in the plan anyway, uh, but this has just made things a little more 
uh, important. Look at this dog. We need a garage. Final few when I can get them all in the first go. It makes it really nice. Babies, you're already up there. Nice. All right, no, I gotta get through. Excuse me. Excuse me, not all of you. The other day, I can't get you in. That's it. Okay, you can stay. All right, let's get the show on the room. 100 and over is gonna go over there, and the rest will go back in for another week. Okay, I'm gonna create a new session with today's dates. And I always call these just weights, because I'm just weighing them. And then if they get scanned, it will automatically say Brussels ship for all of them. And then I'll just get the Bluetooth going here. Trigger. Perfect. Okay, let's try you. Scan this one. Lamb. So this one would have been destined for uh, the buddy that was going to buy them privately from me, but uh, it's going to go to market like what I originally had planned. So it's average daily gain is one from the last time I waited, but 0. 0.67 since uh, yes. born. A triplet. You get a friend. game is off today. That's it. A lot of you always ask, you know, how do the bottle babies really perform compared to the, you know, compared to the ones I get to stay with mom. So if you kind of know my system, you know that I try to pull anything. If mom has like three or four or five lambs, I'll, I'll leave two with her. Uh, so I just thought I would show you. This, I want to show you the data on this, on this little ewe lamb. Okay, this ewe lamb was a quint, so she was one of five. Uh, a Rideau cross Ile de France, so Ile de France was the sire. She weighed, okay, so she was born September 16th, so September, October, November, December, January, February. She's five months old, exactly to the day today, and she's 101 pounds. So her average daily gain was 0.62 since birth. And uh, when you press activity, she was a bottle baby. So it just goes to show you that um, that even the babies on the machine, uh, it might take them a bit longer, but it is a quint, so it might have took this long anyway. It'd be, it'd be interesting to compare her to uh, the rest in that group, or at least the two that stayed with mom. Uh, so that's something I can do when this group is kind of wrapped up, but I just thought I would show you that. I think that's pretty, pretty interesting. Stop, you guys. All right, let's finish up these guys. Almost done. Just finished up, which is good. We have another trailer load this week. Oh, my exposure, sorry guys. 
Uh, another trailer load this week and uh, so there's 23 in this group and I'll just go over the stats real quick as we do. I don't know if you guys like seeing this. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys like this part? Do you, are you getting bored of it? Um, I only include it because I'm basically sharing a day in life every single time I vlog because that kind of is what a vlog is. Um, so there's 23 in this group. The minimum weight was 101, the max was 110. So pretty tight group this time for 23 of them. And the average weight is 105. So uh, typically I would like to see that closer to like 108 to 110. I'd like to know if most of these are ewe lambs. I kind of think they are. Yeah, 19 out of the 23 are ewe lambs. So it just gives you kind of an idea of what we're dealing with. Eight of them were Ile de France sired, 10 of them were Suffolk sired, three of them were Steel sired, and two of them were Rideau sired. So yeah, I will be uh, cleaning up. There's, it's nice because next week's my tail ender load and I have a perfect trailer load. There's probably like 25 lambs. Actually, it's less than a trailer load. And then that side's completely, completely emptied. What I'm gonna have to do though is these ewe lambs, I don't really have the room over there, over across the road to move them back over until these all these lambs are weaned. So I think what I'm gonna do is, because this side will be empty next week, uh, but I have to bring those weaned lambs over this week, uh, I am going to probably put those ladies at the back, move them to the back on that side because there's very few uh, left in that pen, so it's almost empty. That'll keep that side warm too and the water bowls warm and then I have this whole entire side for the, uh, the, the first of the two pens of wean lamb. So I'll take you guys along for that. That'll be Thursday. Today's Tuesday, so that'll be Thursday's job. Um, but until I can do that, it's all logistics. I have to ship. That's part of the reason I'm shipping tomorrow. Um, I like to get that done. And then the, trailers, the trailer is on the truck and all ready to go for the next morning. And, uh, and then I can just wean lambs. And Chris is actually does not have class this week, so she's gonna give me a hand on Thursday. So, anyways, that is it. I'm gonna clean up and uh, catch up with you guys in a bit. So hot, I'm too hot to take off my clothes. You know? Oh, hello. We have made up, haven't we? Oh, hello. Hello. My boy. That's my boy. I love you too. Hello, Ruby. How is my girl? Hello. Oh, oh of course. Of course. There you go. This is the only way you'll stand for me, is if you get a little scratch. Hey, you hate the camera. Good girl. I'm just super paranoid now, and uh, just like doing a little walk, a walk down once, at least once or twice a day, just to make sure I don't see anyone else starting to have their udder bloom up on me. So far there's a few, but I'm, I'm thinking there won't be too, too many following me. So I'm hoping it's just a few or none. That would be, the, that would be best case scenario. I am going to put them on a flush ration here shortly. They're eating their feed real, real quick. And uh, I'm just concerned that there's enough that might be a little earlier than I'm expecting or planning for. Uh, so I want to get them at least on a flush ration and then in about two weeks I'll change that to that close-up ration. Um, and in that close-up ration they have a pellet and that just helps with... I seem to be, I guess, infamous for some prank talks in the last year. Uh, so this, uh, we've been feeding this pellet just to make the feed a bit denser. So I do have to start doing that. I have some pellets left over from the last group. So I will, uh, I'm going to go to the office now and and build a new feed sheet starting tomorrow. I'll have these guys on flush. I've got that group that's getting weaned. They are on a dry ration now. I wanna be on top of stuff because I'm not busy. I have no excuse to not be on top of things. 
here. Okay, I got my feed sheet all made up and uh, so there's quite a few quite a few groups on flush now. You can't really see that too good. Uh, so as you can see I've got all these columns all my different rations so here's flush and flush two. It's the same it's the same breakout. Um, just I didn't think it was all gonna fit in the mixer at the same time. Uh, there's the close-up ready to go here in a couple weeks. That's the, uh, this is the formulation, and then I'll just plug in how many U's, get it, and then it, and on Excel it just automatic, automatically populates those cells, and then I know how much they get. The other thing while I was in there, the other day, typically when stuff goes sideways here, I have to like scour my phone for, uh, my vet sent me a whole bunch of protocols for different things that my flock is susceptible to just you know the things that I was always texting them about and to find those texts I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling or even to find this email uh, for whatever reason I think it's because there's an attachment I just I have a brute of a time finding it so last uh, Friday I took some time and I printed them all off I don't know why I didn't do this like two years ago when he got, got it to me anyway I have a standard oper operating procedure binder for in case I'm not here and anybody needs to see it. So just an SOP binder. It likely should get updated, but for the most part, believe it or not, my job hasn't changed much. So on just daily chores, and then how chores changes during lambing, how to like run the loader with pictures, of course. So yeah, if, if people learn by pictures, that's how I learn as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all these vet protocol um, sheets also in my binder. I have a protocol uh, for listeriosis and, and with all my protocols, like all my treatment protocol, I also have like a whole paragraph on what you should see. So like symptomology basically. So we have one for listeriosis, coccidiosis, mastitis, retained placenta and metritis, lamb pneumonia, polio, joint ill, and preg tox. So as you guys know, because I have walked you along all these things. Uh, I'm very susceptible to a few things in this. I use this stuff all the time. Anyway, I put that, I just put my, um, I put it on my clipboard. So yeah, I just thought I would, I was printing this off and I, that was still in the printer. So I just, I'm feeling pretty good about having that handy. Um, if I have it, hopefully I won't need it. That's kind of the, uh, the goal. So I'm just gonna throw one of these feed sheets on the telehandler and one on the clipboard. And then we're good go, uh, for a couple weeks before I have to change it to the close-up ration. And that's probably it for today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for subscribing and liking this video and all of the things. We are on the road to the next lambing group, which is going to happen basically a month today. We will be in the heat of lambing. So you guys know the drill. It will be weaning. It will be clean out. It will be set up. It will get a, be getting a lambing kit ready. It will be all the things. You guys know exactly what the drill is. Uh, but every lambing group's a bit different, and uh, it will be what it will be. Thanks for hanging out with me. Stay tuned for lots of more interesting stuff, and hopefully winter is, um, I hope this is the last blast for a while. Take care, guys. Have a great one.